It's time for the show about the people and the places of the Carolinas with the occasional visitors. In addition to hosting the award-winning syndicated TV show Life in the Carolinas, Carl White writes a weekly syndicated column and now hosts this weekly show, the Life in the Carolinas podcast. Now you can hear the story about the stories. And now here's your host, Carl White. Welcome, Alex Key, to Life in the Carolinas podcast. Awfully good to see you, buddy. Great to see you as well. Thanks for having me. You know, I, I don't know. I think I first saw you uh, perform, I don't know, four or five years ago, I guess. That sounds about right. And and I said, well, okay, wait a minute. He's young. He he, he, he was up on a stool, I think. And you, 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 you're not a big guy, but you had this deep voice. I, I was looking... Who's who's uh, what soundtrack is that? What is it, is that really him? You know, and we talked. You know, I talked to you about me. It was just a, an incredible uh, moment of where I said I'm making notes. And any events that we've been at that you've been performing, we've been building a library. Yeah. You know, so we've got the Alex Library that we said <laughs> one day we'll do some stories and we'll we'll go back and reflect on that fun time. Yeah, how'd this all happen, Alex? Oh, uh, I. I I don't really know. A lot of hard work and late nights and right. uh, good good people surrounding me. It's right. the only, only explanation I have for it. I mean, it was, you know, something I, I knew I wanted to do. Right. And, um, you know, it just ca- it came down to uh, how am I going to do it? Right. And and then just doing it. And, and it's been one of those things where we kind of set out on the path and uh, we've been very blessed. Mm. I mean, I, 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 no way to deny that. Um, and and we're very thankful for the reception that, that what we're doing has uh, has has gained. Well, let's go back in time a little bit because it had to start somewhere. I mean, right. when did you first start singing? I mean, when did what do you remember of your earliest days of when you said I like to sing? Yeah, well, um, pretty much before I could talk. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, Ma would you know right. play. You know anything from George Strait to Ozzy Osbourne, right, you know right. in, anything in between, and and so I grew up. You know, she took me to my first Merle Fest when right. I was three months old. Right, you know, I was born in January. It happened in April. And so you know, I've been three around months, music. three yeah, months, three okay. months old, three months old. Yeah, and and I, th- I think she also said that at three months old, she had me up on the table and I was dancing for some girls, <laughs> trying to show off. So you know, so that, so it got started very right. young. But right. uh, as far as you know, when I decided, you know, <laughs> that I, I truly wanted to pursue singing. Um, you know, even back in elementary school, I'd still want to do the 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 theater thing. You know, where right. you you do the little plays and stuff, and you have music class. What was your first part you remember? Oh my goodness, the first part I remember would be there's a there's an artist named Amos Lee. Yeah, and uh, when I was, I guess this was like first grade. This was either kindergarten or first grade. We did a talent show, uh-huh. and I sang uh, Colors by Colin. Amos Lee. Yeah. Right, right. And, uh, you know, at the time, I was like, man, I, I, I killed that. Yeah. But I'm sure I sounded terrible. <laughs> but, <you know. laughs> now, was your voice was your voice always deeper? It used to be deeper than it is now, actually. Really? No. Uh, <laughs> you, well, I mean, I talked all, all sorts of things happen, you know. By the way, folks, uh, Mom is sitting right here. Uh, and I can tell you this, your mom, I don't know if she's officially your agent or not, but if she's not, she's she's one heck of a super mom agent type. <laughs> if she, that's not what she, she is. She is my manager. Right. She is. And she uh she does a great job at it. She keeps me out of trouble. Which right. Which is ninety percent of the job. Right. You know, the ten percent of it's the business, but ninety percent is keeping me out of trouble. And right. she does she, she does a great job at both. Has she, has <laughs> the she, hard job I, I you know, I, keeping me out of trouble, but Well, you know, that's <laughs> that's part of the persona as well too, you know. You know. That, that that bad that bad boy, he's he's you know there's a, there's a side of that, right? Oh yeah. All right. So here you are. Your voice start as you get older. You begin to develop this country sound, right? So when was it that you were on stage? Let's kind of talk about that moment okay. of where people responded to this country sound that you have now. Yeah. So I mean, I'll, I'll be straightforward. For a while in middle school, yeah. I wanted to be a rock singer. I wanted right. to sing rock, and um, that didn't. That didn't pan out so well because I mean right. you, you can hear my voice. I don't really have the voice for rock, mm-hmm. and uh, so that reception was not good. You know, just being honest, that reception was not good. Um, <laughs> but see, I don't know. Right, right. Somewhere around you know probably seventh or eighth grade, I, I was you know listening to myself. I was like, you know, I've got a country voice. It seemed logical to right. 
maybe sing country instead right. and so you know i started singing country and uh it just it really went from there and uh it took a while to find my voice you know exactly where i wanted to be what range you know suited best and stuff and probably it took longer for me than it did a lot of people because i i did toy with so many different genres and mm -hmm. so many different places and stuff but wasn't that good though to yeah. have those experiences of course it was of right. course it was i don't you know if i just jumped right into this is where i belong you know i don't think i would i, I wouldn't like you say i wouldn't have had those experiences mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. that's okay. okay all right so there you went from being a little bit rock but not so good to <laughs> to country and saying okay this is my groove this is where i belong and uh that journey of once you settled in because a lot of people in the carolinas and around the country we have a lot of incredibly talented people a lot of folk want to say well i want to be an entertainer right. i want to be on stage a lot of people say that but then to actually do it it's a lot of hard work to get there right yes, sir it sure is it, it, it's it, it's tough so getting there in that moment you're on stage and you're like okay this is going to work now tell us how that felt Oh, let's see. When would that be? I assume that would probably have been around three years ago. Um, I decided it's not been that long. You know, right. three or four years ago. Um, and I, like I said, I've been performing on stage since I was little in different mm -hmm. capacities. But when I truly realized I could do this as a, a career and as a living, so I did landscaping for a little while out of high school. I right. had my own landscaping company and also worked for a couple of companies. And you know, that was that was fun. And I enjoyed mm -hmm. doing landscaping. But I realized. I don't necessarily enjoy doing it for other people. Uh, <laughs> I'd rather do it at home, you know. So, so you're so so you're a gardener at heart. You like your hands in the soil, but you want it to be your soil. I do. I, well, I'm not great at planting flowers. Now I'll right. leave that to, to Mama and stuff. But right. I do. I, I enjoy doing landscaping and you know getting out and okay. working on the tractor and stuff like that. That's and being outside. You know, I right. truly truly enjoy that and even mowing. You know, I guess you know. But uh, but long story it, short, it, no, it works nicely with country songs. Of course it does. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's authentic. You know, it's it's, it's so you're doing. Yeah. You're doing what you what you enjoy doing because it's a good prop for the song. Exactly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, how many country songs have we seen with, you know, you see the guy either driving the truck or on the truck oh, or, yes. you know, out with her horse. And many of them things. have never even touched a tractor right you know and just being honest you know yeah, or, but you have so that's good yeah I mean, this, this, it's my life you know yeah. it's my life and yeah, so it's so good. what i what i do is authentic but you know i guess back to where i figured out i could make a career out of it would be you know 2019 was probably the year that that told me that mm. um i really started traveling and playing you know myrtle beach a lot um playing around north carolina and uh you know i saw the reception hadn't released a whole lot of music really to speak of but um just playing a lot of covers and stuff right. and had put together a, a band at the time and uh, i just realized that if i you know and and mama is the manager and the people around us if we you know put our heads together and, and figure out where to put our efforts that we could make it work mm. and um it, it's working yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. working you know so so you're happy on stage now oh i'm uh, having the best time i've ever had on stage mm -hmm. now because now after releasing a lot of music and uh having success with that music the crowds are getting bigger right um you know and they're singing the songs back to you and stuff like that okay. so it's it's now it's starting to reap the benefits of of all the hard work and there's still a lot left to do i mean i'm, I'm still a baby in the game of it but it's uh it's really starting to show now what i'm what I always felt like was possible i'm 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 learning that it's we're doing it we're in the middle of it so it's let's cool. talk about your songwriting and okay. how, how did that start um because that's a leap you know that's that's a different thing you know okay i'm gonna do rock no i'm gonna do country okay this feels good right you're playing covers people are responding they know the words they know the the rhythm so they're there with you right. because it's familiar yeah and now you're going to start writing your own music correct that's different right so you know i guess that really comes from uh i also i would attribute that to, to mom as well because she's mm -hmm. a great writer and um my grandpa is also a great writer uh more poetry than anything right. um and mama did a lot of poetry and i guess it was more of a hereditary thing that i was able mm -hmm. to to do poetry and you know i just turned that poetry into into songs and um you know so I've, I've always actually done that uh for many years and i've written songs since i was probably 
11, 10 or 11. You so know, were you writing songs. songs or just poetry that turned into songs? I really I really started more with songs. You know, okay. I, and I'd always enjoyed writing a little bit of poetry, you know, just for fun. But right. when I started playing guitar around age 11, I started putting the two together. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, at age 11, 12, you know, they <laughs> right, were right. not that great. But, right. you know, as the years went by, and uh, much like settling into my voice, um, I started settling into my songwriting mm-hmm. and, you know, where where I needed to be and what was interesting, what wasn't, you right. know, and, and also researching along the way how to not be cookie cutter. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to write the same song that you know they're writing every day. I want to write something different. You know, so consciously, mm-hmm. you're you're sitting down with pen and paper, and you're putting ideas down, mm-hmm. and you're thinking, oh, please don't let this be a George Strait song that I heard and I forgot. Well, that, <laughs> that, that does of, happen. Right. I mean, that does happen. You know, you're you're in the middle of writing a song, and uh, fun fact for you, I don't actually write songs down. I actually, I tend to just leave them in my head. Oh. And I, when I'm sitting, because I write with a guitar, I don't ever right. just sit down and, you know, I'm going to write a song. I pick the guitar up, I find some pretty chords, and I just start writing. So you're not you're not writing the words down? No. Or yeah. the music? No. I just, right. I, I write the music, I write the words in my head, and every once in a while I might make a note in my phone or something like that, mm-hmm. but I sing it so much as I'm writing it that there's really no chance of me forgetting it by the time I'm done. Okay, wait a minute. So so you're you're writing your music, mm-hmm. you're writing your words in right. your head, mm-hmm. you're playing them, and you keep playing them enough to where you're happy with it, mm-hmm. and then somebody else writes the words down for you? No. So... That, that most, don't tell anybody I said this, most of my songs never get written down unless, for instance, I have to send them to, say, the studio. If right. the studio needs a copy of the lyric sheet, then I'll have to sit down and type them out for them to grasp them right you know other than that no well that's just a big wow uh (laughs) okay all right so uh that'll be interesting on liner notes but (laughs) so somebody's gonna do that we'll have have words transcribed for you okay okay so so you got that going on wow okay so now you've started writing music in the alex way right right? and uh what was the first song that you wrote that you got great response from not the first ones you wrote that nobody has heard but the ones that the audience came they come to life they were right there with you uh that i mean that's that's a hard one because you know writing for so many years um and again with such a Fast amount of performances in 2019. I guess you know one of the earliest songs, but well, well before I'd even recorded it, um, that people really liked was a song called "Heartbreaking Country Song." Mm. It's a long song. It's like five minutes long, mm-hmm. slow ballad. Yeah, six eight ballad. You know, right. it's it's a waltz style song. And uh, but I, I remember people truly just enjoying that song, and that was that was a song that people would come up after, you know, the show and say. Whose song is that? And I'll say, well, that was mine. You know, mm-hmm. like, I love that song. You know, so that was one of the first you know songs that I, I feel like people Connected. truly started to connect to, and that also helped lay the ground to say, okay, well, you know, maybe I fit more into the classic country. You know, maybe that's where I that's where my heart's always been. Right, right. But for a long time, you're taught, you know, you need to do what everybody else is doing. Everybody else is doing the pop country thing, and um, but the response I was getting from that versus some of my more pop country stuff, I was like, well. Let's let's move this way, mm-hmm. and since then, I mean, it's just been that was the right move. Right. You know? So that that's what that started your process yeah. of really saying, okay, I made something, people are into it, and that felt good. Right. All right. Wow. All right. So let's kind of fast forward a little bit. Talk about that first band, and my gosh, now you got a big bus with your picture on the side of the bus going down the road. That's that's pretty cool, right? It is. It's it's a little terrifying when you walk out in the middle of the night because you forget something on it, and you look right. up and there's a 15 foot version of yourself. Right. That's a little scary. Yeah. But you know, other than that, it's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's you. So well, you, I know that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Well, when you put yourself out in the public eye, you know, continually, you know, then, yeah. uh, but you live out in the country, don't you? I do. Okay. I do. But it doesn't help any because I constantly, I'm getting messages on TikTok and, and Facebook and Instagram. And people constantly, they're like, do you live in Ferguson? You know, I just passed a house with a bus 
sitting outside of it that you know it's got your picture got on your it. picture on it. i'm like <laughs> i'm just visiting right right just visiting you know? yeah well it's hard to hide when you're when you've got a a bus with your picture on the other side that it day. is yeah. it is but it's great advertising yeah, i wouldn't i wouldn't course. change a thing yeah. no no that's good stuff all right so a lot of new things going on in your life not only have you got the bus you're you're going to nashville you're recording you've got cool people playing on on your on your music now and there's something that new that's new that you've got coming out, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, and I love the storyline behind this song. Uh, why don't we talk about this thing around around the rebirth, I guess, of a NASCAR track in Wilkes County, and and uh, a message that seem seem it's gone national, you know, yes. and that's pretty darn interesting, right? It is, it is. So you know, the the whole big movement right now with North Wilkesboro Speedway is we want you back, right? That's the big movement, and. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, it tried. It tried in the what was it, 2010, I guess, to, right. to have a comeback, and it what the timing wasn't right. Mm-hmm. Um, the people that were behind it were not the same people that are behind it now. Right. Um, you know, some some really close friends of mine, um, for instance, Terry Parsons. Right. Um, she is is throwing her heart and soul into this thing, mm-hmm. and so it's going to be done right. You know, right. and SMI, you know, is, is right. before they weren't really the ones controlling the situation Mm -hmm. they just owned it right now they're the ones saying okay let's do it smi is ready to do it when smi the owners of the track are ready things are going to start moving right and um so it's the the people are there the the heart is there you know and something else we have to think about too is in 1996 last race was raced Fast forward to 2010, it's been 14 years. Right. 2009, I think, is when they started. So, you know, you're, you're looking at 13, 14 years. Okay, that's a little while. Now we're looking at 24, 25 years. Right. So now we've got this much, much bigger gap. People are ready for nostalgia. They weren't. I don't think they were ready 13, 14 years ago. I think Even, you're right. I, I think, think you're the right. timing just wasn't long enough, and now we have people that, you know, heck, if you think about it, we have fourteen and fifteen year olds that weren't even alive the last <laughs> time. Right. It, last time it was you know rebirthed. You, you know? know, it appears to me that there there are people that uh, there's some anchor people that are involved now that were involved earlier. But then there are other people that that nostalgia is true, and they're at a position in their life now that they can they can step up and 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 effectuate more change exactly. than they could have you know maybe when their businesses were smaller. Exactly, right. and I, you, I mean you hit the nail on the head. It's 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 the timing is right the people and and everybody everybody's just ready to do it Mm -hmm. and it's it's got a lot more enthusiasm this time around it and i think because you know also it's not even just the track it's everything in life you know Mm -hmm. people are wanting what i'm seeing on my end people are wanting uh classic country back Mm -hmm. they're they're wanting small town usa's back you see a lot more you know counties and towns like we have here coming back and rebuilding because people are kind of getting sick of the big glamour look at me they want the smaller simpler you know more intimate stuff the more, right. the more intimate environment to where if, if you can hear the roosters crow in the morning people are wanting and you can hear the coyotes at night you know in certain parts of the area right yeah that's a pretty special a pretty that's a special experience yeah, it is for people to be able to have it is you're exactly right all right so let's talk you knew the messaging was happening right and how did the song come about? How, what was the uh, the beginning of this idea? Of, let's let's see if we can make some music. Yeah. So the beginning of the song started when I was over at the Rag Company, mm-hmm. who you know Tim over there's a, a good friend of ours, and right. uh, we were picking up some merchandise. You know, me and Tim were sitting there talking, and you know, he was like, "Maybe you should do a song about this thing." And I was like, "Well, mm-hmm. it's not a bad idea. You know, it's right. a pretty good idea." And he was like, "I think it would be a great idea." And I was like, "Well." Give me a couple of weeks. Right, let right. me see what I can come up with. And Tim was like, "Don't let me down," you know. Right, right. So, so uh, anyway, I come back a couple of weeks later. And I said, "Tim, I said I think I've, I think I've written a song, you mm-hmm. know, for it, and played the first cut of it, and uh, which I wasn't happy with, but mm-hmm. it was what I had at the time, you right. know." I was like, and he he loved it. He was mm-hmm. like, "No, it's perfect the way it is." I was like, "I'm not happy with it yet." Right, so it right, went right. through several rebirthing phases, mm-hmm. and. Um, it finally got to a position. We did an event with uh, Jeff Hammond over at North Wilkesboro Speedway for the volunteers. Jeff's great, isn't he? he he's awesome, yeah. <laughs> Everybody needs a 
pit crew manager in their life don't they though <laughs> I mean, he's yeah. absolutely wonderful and so so we did an event over there and he came and spoke and we had jessica from smi and um they wanted me to play the song mm-hmm. so i played the song still a different version than what we ended up with it's a little slower um and so uh everybody really liked it mm-hmm. and a movie that's being made here you know wanted to pick it up and everything and you know, still wasn't clicking and Ma suggested um to speed it up so i sped it up and it really did change the song for the better mm-hmm. it, it made it more upbeat and mm-hmm. and happier and uh lifted it it just lifted the whole song so it went through several rebirthing phases um from a slow uh kind of ballad type ballad of thing. song yeah right. to to this upbeat up tempo positive you mm-hmm. know just mm-hmm. right, nostalgic right. song yep. and that that's where we're at right now and it's you know been recorded and almost ready to come out so you went to nashville correct uh did your recording there yes yeah. uh we we had a lot of great people on that too we had like garth brooks keyboard player right you know right. which was fantastic uh so it, it's a it's a great recording and um we're really proud of it and you know we're just uh, Nashville's been good to me. The people mm-hmm. there, um, the studio that I work with in particular, and uh, it's just, uh, I think it's going to come together nicely. So, uh, there's a video with it as well? There is. Yeah? There is. So, we just actually, we just wrapped up filming with that yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um uh, pretty late in the evening. We've I think we've done three days of filming for it. Um, we've all around town, mm-hmm. Wilkesboro and North Wilkesboro, at the Speedway, out in the country uh just all over the place and right. terry's helped a lot with that too being the film commissioner um so we've been all over wilkes doing that and stirring up a lot of you know what's going on you know yeah, people right, on right, the right. wilkes county information you know right. you know i see the bus i see the bus you know yeah. so it's it's been um it's been fun but uh i'm i'm ready i'm ready to get it done and out you yeah. know well that's that's that creative process but what is interesting i think is uh, when you and i were talking a few days ago you shared a little bit of information about the scripting so this isn't something of where you know someone else has done this so you've gone from actually you know just writing words in your head and, and singing them till you remember them <laughs> but you're also putting your toe in the creative world as far as scripting right i did i wrote the screenplay for the video and and uh-huh. basically i i'm i'm i didn't film it right well. i didn't film it uh, dawson <laughs> right. dawson smith did the videography right. but uh um i did write the video and I, I knew how I wanted it because uh, uh-huh. back to the songwriting, I guess is another reason I don't have to write things down is because when I write a song, in my my head it plays as a movie. Mm-hmm. So before I ever put the words out, right, I know where I want it to go. I know how I want the movie to start. And I know how I want it to end. And so that was really the process with this song as well. Um, and I just didn't know I needed it to be an upbeat movie, right, as opposed to a more of a sundance indie film <laughs> right, right, right but that's good though right i mean it's uh, you know from what i heard and what i've heard from a few other people i've chatted with about this uh one thing that tim shared with me is he thought that this the idea was picking up some momentum around the country as where the messaging started as we want you back in wilkes but it's a little deeper than that isn't it it is talk about that it is you know it's um it's it's crazy, really. Honestly, the the whole the "We Want You Back" movement, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was telling me the other day that he was sending shirts to Ireland. Right. Yeah. I mean, people people everywhere want this thing back, and I th- I think it's I think that comes back to kind of what we were talking about earlier with the the nostalgia of everything. Right. And people not getting to experience those in the short tracks. Everybody everywhere is wanting short tracks. When I mean, you look at Bristol, you know, and Rockingham and things like that, and I think. That's just the reason it's moving so so spread out is because back to what we're talking about, people are wanting that that smaller, more intimate feeling. They want to feel closer to the race car drivers. They don't want to watch them go sure. two miles around in a in a circuit, you know. And it's safer too. Honestly, you're not going right. there as fast. You know, you don't have to really as much worry about someone potentially not walking away at the end of the day. Sure. Right. So I think there's just so much around North Wilkes for Speedway. Also, you know, as far as the routes. It's where it started right I mean, that's right this, this is where that's it right. started you know first race was 47 right. 1947 all those years ago now i think the first nascar race was in florida if i'm not right. mistaken but the first stock car you know situation and track started right here and so i think that's why there's so much um enthusiasm around getting this track back hmm. is because this is the this is the birthplace this is the right. 
the rock that started it all. You know? And that's then that's the track. But the message and messaging, you know, we want you back. Mm-hmm. It kind of speaks to our memories and those other things about life. Correct. Other than just the the driving around the track, but you know that seems to be part of this song as well. Correct. So that's you know. With what we were discussing about nostalgia and small town life and stuff, and you know, the you walk down the street of certain towns, mm-hmm. you see a lot of for lease signs, right? As opposed to flourishing businesses, right? People are wanting that back. People are not that they have anything against Walmart, everybody goes to Walmart, you know, yeah. we all go to Walmart, but sometimes it would also be nice to park your car right beside of you know, Joe's whatever knickknack shop and go right. in there and check that out people want that that small town life they want to go christmas shopping on the sidewalk and and so that is a part of this song and the messaging um you know country music just mm-hmm. country music being country again is part right. of the song um of course the track and just in general things that we fish in you know with your grandparents you know sure. going to your grandparents house and stuff like that just things that so maybe some of it you can get back. You have control over over getting certain aspects back, and some of it you don't. But you acknowledge that you took some of it for granted, mm-hmm. and you're just saying that you do you you want it back. We want it back. There's you know this group of people that we acknowledge that you know there's certain parts of our past we don't want a part of again. Right. <laughs> but that's I true. mean that's that's just the fact. But there's also certain parts that that we when we were living it we we didn't necessarily realize what we had. And we we would love to have it back. We want we want that feel good back. That's it. You know, and that's uh, yeah. I think that I think you hit it on the nail. That's uh, exactly where we are. And I think all people are when things are complicated in the world. Uh, we want to feel the good things we felt before. Bottle of Coke made from glass. Mass cars are running those old short tracks like my hometown. North Wilkesboro Speedway After church on Sunday And we want you back uh, I think the nice thing about your journey that you're on now is not only that, you know, touch yeah. on the idea of nostalgia, but it's creating the now, you know. So when you sing the songs now and you have these experiences now, so it's no longer nostalgia. No. It's today. It's today. And that's a pretty darn cool thing. It is. And, you know, that's that's kind of where I'm at with with, mu- with my entire career in general. My whole – my branding, so to speak, right. is, is, is embodying classic country in a new way. I can't go back in 1999 no. or 96 and, and be a 90s country artist, but I can create a sound that is for people that are over the age of 25. Hmm. It's a familiar sound that they heard several years ago. And for people that are under the age of 25, it's a sound that they're not very familiar with because mm-hmm. it's not been in their face for several years. So it's both new and old at the same time. And my my brand in general is just embodying classic and bringing it to the 21st century. Right. You know, I don't want the recordings to sound like they were from 1995. Sure. I want them to sound modern. But I, I don't want the drum, you know, the synth beats and stuff in the background. Right. I want real drums. I want steel guitar and stuff like that. So it's it's mm. it's taking the new and it's taking the old and and hopefully it's creating something unique and and new. So it's what key country, key country, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, I love this. We we love all sorts of music and life in the Carolinas. We've we visit with all sorts of great musicians, and it's just been wonderful. We we love our visits to the Don Gibson Theater in Shelby, of course, you know, yeah. and uh, talk about a, a community with enormous amounts of uh, music legendary, you know, oh, from that area. Huge. It's amazing. Uh, Wilkes has that. We have it all over the Carolinas. It's just do. incredible. You talked about going to Myrtle Beach. I mean, mm-hmm. think about the musicians that got their start yeah. in Myrtle Beach, and yeah. that's where the magic really happened, was when that audience, that energetic audience, you know, was there yeah. to to – celebrate life with the musicians on stage you know that's a pretty special thing right? it's a blessing it's yeah. a blessing and you know there's there there is so much talent um in these areas and 
that's another thing you know back to taking things for granted you know a mm. lot of a lot of very talented artists are, are taken for granted you know mm. and and that's something that i would really like to see you know i was talking to a teacher today over at the the event we were at earlier right. um you know i'd like to see schools embracing arts more arts of all kind not just not just music but you know painting you know and and, and remind kids that you know yes it's great to to want to be a doctor or you know any any of this other stuff that you know is is con- is considered in our society as a, uh, a a normal job, right? But it's also okay to to remind kids that they can make a living being creative, right. whether that's filmmaking, music making, art, you know, painting, and and there's there's other things that that we really need to put um, in these kids' minds and tell them it's 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 okay. To be different, right, and to have fun with life, and 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 now more than ever, we're in a situation where you can do anything you want to. You can truly be yourself and, and make a living at it. So that's and that's I know that's kind of a side side note, but that's just something I was talking to teacher, and I'd really like to get more uh, more funding back to to the arts in in our. So, so the, there is more attention to the artists. And stuff. I think so. We we've interviewed several people that talk about this very same thing uh educators who have a passion for the arts and they know the benefit they've seen over the years kids that have gone through art programs and what they've gone on to do with their life uh it's it's easier i suppose to be one-dimensional but it's not fulfilling Correct. You know, if if you only focus on you know the uh, one aspect of business, and you're great at it, yeah. but then you have you don't have the creative side to you know soothe the nerves a bit. It is. You know, that's I mean, you're exactly a right. Difficult thing. We're we're ingrained. You know, and I remember being in school. We're ingrained. I, I was laughed at. Honest to goodness, I was laughed at by not only teachers but you know peers and stuff when I said I want to be a musician. That was funny. Right. Well, why is that funny? Right. Why is, why is, why is that funny? How, what, talk about that for me. So, so you're sharing your passion. You're sharing what you want to do, and 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 you're being laughed at for that. I mean, how do you feel about that? Well, you know, at the time it was kind of like you know, okay, it's funny, yeah. I guess. You know, it's ha ha ha. It's a right. joke, you know. But they were going around. They go around the room and they say. Where's everybody going to college? You know, right. you're in junior junior year or so, and everybody's like, "Well, where are you going to college?" And I'm going to App State, or I'm going blah blah blah. And um, I said, "Well, I'm probably not going to college." And right. they're like, "Explain yourself." You know, right. what do you mean? And I was like, "Well, it's not that I've got anything against college. It's just that I want to be a musician, mm-hmm. and I can go to school for performing arts, or I can just learn it myself and do it, mm-hmm. and um, and practice it." And so that's that's the way I, I went. But when I said that, I mean, everybody was just kind of flabbergasted that i would right. and they were like well you need a backup plan and i was like well if i if i have a backup plan and i don't devote 100 percent of myself to my art and everything right. else then i'll never truly make it in my art mm-hmm. because having that backup plan in the back of your mind is is very harmful to to your end goal because if you're constantly thinking, well, if I if I fail at this, I can go do you're, this other thing. You're already planning on something else to do. There's so no other option, right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I, but you had you had an unfair advantage in the fact you had your mother behind you, Correct. right? So that's the difference. Yes. A lot of people who want to go into the arts, yeah. they don't have that driving force behind them. You're exactly and right. It's very difficult without having a champion in your corner. You you said that right, and mm. it that it, that's a huge blessing. I mean, having mm. having people. Like Mama, you know that that truly supports you no matter what what you do. I could have told her I wanted to be anything, right. and she'd have been like, "Go do it. If that's mm-hmm. what you want to do, I'll support you. Go do it." She always knew that I was musically inclined. I mean, she taught me to play the drums. Yeah. So, you know, she was a huge support to what I wanted to do, and always has been, and and will continue to be. But um, like you said, a lot of you know a lot of parents are unfortunately of the mindset like you talked about that if you're not following this line right then you're not going to make it you're not going to survive in in civilization and that's i I would like you know even outside of the education system i would like for for parents to uh you know that's a whole other conversation but i I would love you know more support for for kids in general and their their dreams yeah there you go there you go well life is meant to be lived that's for exactly. sure. That's exactly uh, right. I think the educational process is something that we never stop. Yeah. So it's a continual journey. I mean, obviously, you're having these experiences now. Uh, you're exploring different 
ideas, you know, and in your music writing and performance. So all of that is education, of course. You know, that's but you're doing it. You know, the whole thing. education is meant to. It never ends. No, ever. If you if ever. you stop learning, then you have nothing. Yeah, you know, we were at the same event this morning, and I, I loved seeing these kids do this thing of community service together, doing something to benefit other people. And they were smart kids, right? They they had actually earned the right to be there. And they're doing something to deal with a a difficult part of society, which is hunger, you know? Correct. And and that's something we shouldn't have either, right? So, But being there and seeing that, it gives us hope that from this young age of having that experience imprinted, as they get older, yeah. they're going to continue to – maybe they all won't, right? But a lot of them will. Yeah. And, you know, that is something that I think is is coming from this generation that's coming up is is more awareness. Right. And I think part of that, too, is everybody. I mean, you know, now, now five- and six-year-olds have got phones. Right. And, you know, whether or not you want your child to see it or not, they probably see the effects of hunger and, and sure. things like that. And, they're well, you know – why is this person homeless? You know, why is there a video of a homeless person on TikTok? What does this right. mean? And so things they weren't necessarily exposed to when I was growing up, you know, because we didn't have cell right. phones till we were in high school, you know, but uh, they're, they're – and shows and stuff, everything's a lot more uh, – less restricted on what kids are seeing. So they're seeing this, this you know, homelessness and, and poverty and hunger and, and things that – they are starting to really be adamant about fixing and changing. Right. And this this young generation coming up cares about change. Mm-hmm. And they're seeing the effects of, you know, uh, what we're doing to the world. You know, you look at, you know, the littering in general. I mean, you shouldn't litter. It's, no. not, it's not a hard concept, but people do it all the time. You know, there's trash always in my yard where people drive by and throw stuff out of their window. So, you know, it's it's just one of those things where I think kids are starting to really accept that, you know, we have to make changes in, in our day-to-day if we want to, our kids – Right. You know, in the next generation, to to have a world to live in, right? Yeah. That's litter free. That's litter free. Yeah. <laughs> How cool would that be? I'm with you. I don't get the littering. Oh my uh, gosh, it drives me I crazy. I don't get. It. I mean, trash cans are beautiful places to put trash everywhere. <laughs> Literally one everywhere. <laughs> put it, yeah. Just put put it over there. But yeah, yeah, we 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 humans have situations, don't we? We do. We certainly we do. do. Well, Alex, uh, this has been great yes, sitting down with you. Helping, you know, just sharing your story with the world because it's such an interesting story. I mean, I love the fact that you write music in your head and, and you never write it down. That's incredible. So so that's good. Uh, I love the fact you love your mama and your mama loves you. And more than that, she's helping direct you and, and you're at a place now where, you know, you're, you're living that experience that uh, – uh, you know, a few people get to live, so that's pretty darn good. It is. It's uh, awesome. I think. I think if uh, if you've got your guitar, uh, my, I think we'd my. love to hear this new song that's going to be coming out real soon, okay. and uh, let the rest of the world, our life in the Carolinas fans, yeah. take a listen to this thing that uh, we believe we believe is going to resonate with a lot of people. That sounds great. I would love to play that for you. Real quick, I'd just like to shout out, uh, yeah. in case you're listening, to uh, you know the rest of my family, you know uh, my dad, grandparents, everybody that's potentially listening, and the right. band. Right. You know, the band and the rest of the people that are uh, all right. So we got we got life. we got we got mom. Her name mm-hmm. is uh, her Karen. That's Karen. So we got Karen and Dad is Willie. So da- okay, Karen, Willie, Grandpa, uh, Ronnie, Ronnie. Don't Ronnie. tell him I called him by his first name. Okay, don't tell him. No, Ronnie. He didn't do that. <laughs> we we twisted his arm. <laughs> Papa. Uh, who's next? Uh, Nana, which is is Linda. Nana, I love that. Nana is Linda. Okay, who else? Uh, I mean, there's there's tons of people. My my aunt, my aunt Willow, my aunt uncle Willow. Greg, my other That's son, right. you know, That's right. my uncle Mark. I mean, it goes on. My this aunt is Penny, our show. You know. We do anything we want to. My uncle Alan. I mean, it goes on and on. Yeah. In the band, I should shout out my band because okay. I have an amazing band. I'm very supportive. Who are they? Uh, my drummer is uh, Martin Moore. You know, Martin. great great guy. Good job. Um, Gary Foster's the bass player. Gary Foster, bass Kevin player. Eller's the guitarist. Kevin Eller. Um, yeah. Alex Key, he's okay. Um, <laughs> he, he sings, <laughs> plays guitar. I won't talk too bad about him. No. Um, and, you know, we're, we're bringing on other people. You yeah. know, we, Who's we just, driving the bus? I drive the bus. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I drive the bus. That'll be the next evolution. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the long trips, you're going to want to be resting It's in a about. very in-house situation. Yeah, uh, I got it. But, yeah, man, I mean, there's just so many. I, I just wanted to shout <laughs> that out because I do. I have so yeah. many. Um, you know, Mama's the manager. and 
and and she is the she's the number one go to and, yeah. and support unit. But I, um, she, she'll admit just as quick as I will that we we've got a great group of, of people yeah. around it. It's a blessing and God, of course. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I can't do anything. Well, without, of course, without well, that's that's the originator of all things. So, so I think that's wonderful. And you know what? What you just did, taking time. Taking time to be mindful and and actually, you know, speaking people's names, actually saying those words and expressing gratitude. That's a beautiful way to live life. When we're too busy to care about the ones we care about, then we're just too busy, aren't we? That, you said that exactly right. And that's why mm-hmm. something that, uh, uh, you know, not to drag this on, but something I've never understood is when people always say, and maybe it's just a conversation thing, you know, trying to be funny, but people always say, don't forget where you come from or, or don't forget the little people. There are no little people. You know, everybody is, is a cog in this, this wheel of life. Well, there are shorter people. But, well, but I'm I one of them. I'm one of them. If you're talking about shorter people, I'm like, I'm like three foot. But, yeah. I mean, there's just, you know, people, you know, they say, don't go off and forget about this. <laughs> right, right. This is, this is home. Yeah, and, and that's right. Every single person is equally as valuable as the next. Yeah, and that's, you got that right. That's, that's, so I'll, I'll never, um, no matter what successes I, I, I come upon, I'll never, um, that'll never change. Yeah, that's a good thing. All right. You want to play a song? I think right. that'd be a good idea. Let's do it. Country music, steel guitar, five dollar bill to fill up your car. That part of history, folks like me, we want you back. Bottles of coke made from glass, NASCARs are running those old short tracks like my hometown, Northwest Borough Speedway. After church on Sunday And we want you back Yeah, back in this time to stay One more try having good old days And we won't make the same mistakes It's a shame we have to ask Cause the things we had back then Yeah, we damn sure took for granted And now we see just what we had We want you back A parking spot at the drive-in show A riding reel at the fishing hole With granddad Yeah, little things like that We want you back Old John Wayne still giving them hell And mom and pop stores doing well Small town USA ain't the same since the four lane came, and we want you back. Yeah, back in this time to stay. One more try having good old days, and we won't make the same mistakes. It's a shame we have to ask. Cause the things we had back then Yeah, we damn sure took for granted And now we see just what we had And yeah, we want you back Yeah, some things are gone for good And some are long left in the past But the good Lord proved the best things Can make their way on back yeah, back in this time to stay One more try, had in good old days We won't make the same mistakes The same we have to ask Cause the things we had back then Yeah, we damn so took for granted But now we see just what we had Yeah, we see just what we had We want you back We want you back We want you back
Nice. It's just warm, isn't it? It's a warm song. I mean, it's, it, you know, you close your, it's one of those songs, you close your eyes and, and, and it kind of, it kind of takes you back. You yeah. Know? If you have those memories and you can go there. Yeah. So. Uh, that was what I hoped for. That was yeah. what I hoped for. Well, so you, I'm glad, I'm glad that yeah. is coming across it that way. It. That it makes me happy. It. it did it. Well, especially, you know, when I know the story behind it. Of you course. Know? Of course. I get, but I can imagine other things too. Right. And I think that's. Uh, yeah, even I if, know. yeah, I think that's, you know, that was one of my main things. Like, even if it didn't mention it in the song. Right. It still gets you thinking. As long so, as it gets you thinking. So when you're in Nashville, you're doing this recording. I mean, mm-hmm. what what was the response? I know you're, you're in a studio and, and they're doing this for you, but what kind of feedback did you get there? When I work with the guys in Nashville, they they really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. You can see them start to um, you can see them start to come to life a little bit because they're mm-hmm. so used to, and nothing against it again. Everybody all all art is art and it doesn't matter. But what is happening right now in Nashville is a lot of people are doing what's called pop country or bro right. country, and it's sure. it's very common. Uh, and a lot of that is starting to get very. It's sounding the same. Mm-hmm. It's all sounding very similar. So a lot of these big sessions musicians who, when they're not doing sessions work, they might be Tim McGraw's keyboard player right? or, you know, George Strait's drummer. Uh, you know, so when they're not on the road, they'll do sessions work. So that's where they come in to play with me. But a lot of times they're having to do basically the same song they've done 10 times that day, you know, because everybody's wanting that same sound. So when I come in and I'm like, no, I don't want that. I want to do country. You know, I want right. to do this this old school country music, and and they're like, really? So you can just watch them when they're playing these songs and stuff. And you know, the steel the pedal steel guitar player is back there, and he's smiling ear to ear. Right. You know, and and the bassist is sitting there thumping it out, smiling. When everybody's smiling, you know that they're having fun and that the mm-hmm. music's where it, where it should be, and they're having a good time. So that um, that response is great, and they all just. You know, just being truthful, they all love the songs, and they all bring in when when I'm coming to the studio, they bring in the top notch musicians they can get their hands on because they want to they want to give me the best product that they can get me, and um, they're very receptive of and um, supportive of of what I'm doing. So that has to be incredibly rewarding to you, to 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 take your music, something you've written, mm-hmm. something that you have been inspired by whatever right. you know and and now you're you're seeing it come to life and uh where you say old country but it still is still your key country right it's key country so you're you're coming along with with this sound inspired by what we right. think of right. as as old country when i think of don gibson i think you know i i when i think of the country music i'm i'm thinking of those classic performers right. and the music that you know i would have grown up yeah, with yeah of course and and now you're you're stepping in right. and making it yours Correct. and sharing it from that level. Yeah, I'd like to think that, you know, you know, George Jones had a song called Who's Gonna Fill Their Shoes, you know. Right. And uh they're big shoes to fill and my feet are small, but right. I'm trying to step into them. I'm right. trying to and I have to tie them really tight, right. you know, maybe tie them around my ankles too. Well, what what's wrong with it just being your shoes, your size, your you know, your everything. So Not it's a thing just in the world. it's just you doing your thing and then and then folks who the fans will will follow. Right. I, I got a thing, you know. We say with a show, it's all it it matters to who it matters to. Yeah. You know, it's it's always about uh, that aspect. There's yeah. an audience, you know. Once and you touch that audience and you build that relationship. There, and that's something you know I've really seen lately. Um, I uh, just recently, last as as in last week, uh, last Thursday and Friday actually, my uh, my, my album hit uh, the top forty mm-hmm. on on iTunes. Um, I think it hit number thirty six. That's all right. we know because we don't check the charts. You know, I don't right, check right. the charts. And uh, but I happened to look just out of curiosity, going through iTunes, and I was I'm number thirty six. Right, out of top two hundred, which is I'm the only. Just to give you an idea. I was the only non major label artist on on that list. Right, and that album is called Bar Stools and Saddles. Okay, it's so, the name of the album. All right, um, so that's where people can bar stools and saddles. Maybe kick you up a few more notches. Yeah, right? there you go. Spotify, <laughs> Apple, you know all that right, stuff. Right. But um. You know what I'm seeing now is is I've I've got a uh, you know TikTok TikTok's right. big right now and I, I'm on TikTok and I've got a pretty substantial following and and uh, my video I posted last week on Thursday about a, a it's a cheating song called Sleep Talking. Um, old well, that's school. country. Yeah, it's a, it's an old school sounding you know some, right. you know cheating song and, and uh, so I was like <laughs> I don't know what what'll happen. Put it on little little skit about it and. Um, 
hundred and thirty thousand likes. Right. That's a lot of likes. Oh sure. I've got one that we actually filmed the video for here in town. Um, I posted a just a little clip of the video on there. Almost four hundred thousand likes. Wow. Almost half a million likes. And these are likes, not views. I mean, uh, these million, are all cheating songs. Hmm? Are all those cheating songs? Uh, no, the other no. one was not. Right. The the one we filmed here was just a just a classic love song. Right. Just uh, you all know, right. called the fool that I am. You know, it's about fall in love and acting <laughs> right. all stupid you know and then cheating <laughs> and then cheating the cheating comes oh later you gotta goodness. fall in love first uh, but i guess uh, long story short is is yeah. i'm seeing and most of these people are younger right. most of these people are, are 30 and under and uh even down into 14 15 year olds right. and they're really loving this again old school sounding right. but also new sounding and, um, I think we're seeing awesome. that across the board, Alex. We're seeing it with bluegrass music, you know, like with Billy Strings, and and, yep. and, and and I mean, my gosh, it's like a cult following, and it's all, it's a blend, you know, of older yep. people, younger people, a lot mm-hmm. of younger people, you know. So we're seeing that with country music too, and yep. and uh, you're right, you know, you're, you're trending in your pattern. So that's great news. It is. It's I mean, it's yeah. a blessing, you know. I, yeah. I didn't really expect my first album to i mean i hoped it would do okay right but i didn't accept i I didn't expect to be looking at thousands of copies out of our hands gone you know thousands of copies and millions i mean we're talking millions of streams Hmm. on this album and i never expected any of that hit the top 40 twice and this is just stuff that I, i i mean again back to you know us talking about it's been a blessed year it's been a blessed year yeah. The far ex- exceeded our expectations. So there, there is. Uh, when I look back on 2021, as opposed, especially to 2020, <laughs> right? You will never hear me say, "Wow, wish we could have done better that year." Right? No, it was. It's been a great year. Yeah. It's just been a blessing. Setting setting those trends. There are so many creative people that have done incredibly well through the pandemic period. Right. I think it it has forced people who could not get out in public mm-hmm. and 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 be on stage with with people uh, to go deep and figure out how to be more creative. And I think that's why we're seeing such good stuff now. I think so. And I've seen musicians perform and, and I've really gotten to know them because they're, you know, they're, they're, they're filming from their home or they're doing these very intimate things. And I think that's the best thing in the world to build a relationship with, with, with fans. It is. Yeah. Let people get to know you. You, know? Yeah, you said the word intimate. I mean, right. people feel like they know you. If they can feel like right. they know you, they're much more likely to engage. Right. You know, and, that, and I think that is that's a big thing about TikTok right. is it's not you're not looking at a. I mean, most of the time you're not looking at a professional music video right, or anything. Right. You're just looking at someone that's sitting in front of their phone right. and did something, and that really that grabs the viewer a lot quicker than than this professional thing we've been taught that you have to. I mean, I'm seeing homemade music videos with millions of views on them. For that's people. right. You know, ten yeah. years ago that wouldn't have passed, but now uh, back to that intimate the song. experience. You know, we want sure. you back. You know, people are wanting that that smaller, intimate, closer, tight knit feeling. Maybe that's what we want back. We want that. We want we want to be able to sit around with friends, right? So, growing up and having an experience of being around a lot of people who were talented, yeah. you know, quite honestly, I just assumed everybody was talented. Everybody could sing a bit, and they could, and they were great cooks. Right. Boy, oh boy, was I wrong. <laughs> you go out in the world and you find out, well, my gosh. I had it pretty good, you know. You know well, of course, and, and, but, but I carried the, the know-how with me, right. you know, and I was able to do that. And you kind of move your – as you navigate through life, you, you, you're, if you're fortunate you'll, and wise, you will let those foundations come out no matter where you are, right? Of course. Of course. That's a good thing. It Some is. people don't like Christmas, but – I don't understand that. Crazy but, people. Yeah. Crazy people. Well, anyway. Bless, <laughs> bless their hearts. Bless their hearts. Is all, that's, the, that's the only thing you can say. Bless their hearts. That's right. Bless their hearts. <laughs> Alex, anything else you want to uh, share with us? I mean, this has been great, but you've got something that's doing well on the charts now. Anything off there you want to share with us? You want to... Uh, as far as playing? Yeah. I'll, I'll be happy to play. Would you rather hear... All right, here's a question. Here's a question. Would you rather hear a cheating song? Right. Or would you rather hear a love song? Uh, Tim, your life goes both ways. Which one do you want to hear? <laughs> Tim's been a long time in broadcast, right? Luke, he's not old enough to have too much of either one. But uh, <laughs> Tim's, uh, Luke is Luke is, Luke is wanting. He's he's seeking that. So I don't know. I think we need. To, why don't we have a nice love song? Because that uh, who knows where that goes, and maybe is there that'll... anything in between. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, that's your therapy session. So, <laughs> I think I, I, yeah, I, 
I think I just played the one in between. Yeah, I think <laughs> I, I think I think you did too. So, yeah, um, yeah. This is called the fool that I am. This is the one that we uh, we play. Or we did the video to at yeah. Nathan's Battery. In oh yeah, Bo- yeah. In That's right. Um, so that yeah. was good fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a yeah. one take video. Those are hard to do. Yeah. Uh, it took several takes to get it right, but it was it was cool. It ended up yeah. being you know a, a success uh, in in multiple multiple ways. So, so anyway, this is fool that I am. Uh, if I can remember how to play it. We took December off for the right. record. We, the band, we just decided to take it off from playing. So I haven't been doing right. a lot of playing lately. That's right. Been doing a lot of business as right. far as, you know, the behind the scenes. Right. I've not sat down and played in a long time, so y'all have to forgive me for my rustiness. Oh, no, you're good. All right, let's see what we got. I used to try to be the cool guy. When all the ladies would walk by I'd lean my back against the wall Sunglasses on and all Pull them down and wink an eye But something changed when you walked past My heart has started beating real fast And now I'm saying stupid things Tripping over my own feet You ruined my whole life Got me acting like the fool that I am I used to play it cool, now I can't Since you've gone and seen What's really underneath exposing me for shame You got these stars just to dance in my eyes I can hardly stand these butterflies well, please excuse me, ma'am. I've gone to show my hand for the fool that I am. I used to want to be like James Dean, not faced by anyone or anything. But now I'm wiping away drool like a love drunk kid in school and letting my heart sing. You got me acting like the fool that I am. I used to play it cool, now I can't Since you've gone and seen What's really underneath exposing me for shame You got these stars just to dance in my eyes I can hardly stand these butterflies Well please excuse me ma'am I've gone to show my hand for the foe that I am Got me acting like the fool that I am I used to play it cool, now I can Since you've gone to see What's really underneath exposing me for shame You got these stars just to dance in my eyes I can hardly stand these butterflies Well please excuse me ma'am I've gone to show my hand for the fool I might as well kiss my pride goodbye What I truly am, I just can't hide Please excuse me ma'am I've gone to show my hand for the fool that I am <laughs> you did it. <laughs> so that one's done well on the charts, right? It has done fairly well. Yeah. It has done for I think the t- the highest it was like thirty seven or something like that. Right. But you know, for nice. an independent, yeah, I'll take yeah. it any day. Yeah, man. there you go. You're on the journey, Alex. I think that's a wonderful thing. We love sitting down with creative people in the Carolinas and hearing their stories, and uh, it, it it's it's good news for all of us. Because we're in this nurturing environment for creativity. Whatever you're going to sing, you know, who knows? Who knows? You get to be an old man, you might say, you know, I want to do a little rock and roll, and and all these things you've built your life on, and then you go, your voice is going to be just right, you know, and there you're going to be doing a little rock. You know, there's a song about that, right? Yeah, a little course. bit of rock, a little bit of rock and roll, country, a little country rock and roll. Yeah. Who knows what you're going to do? It's like Darius Rucker. Yeah, Darius, that's right. He started in rock, then all of a sudden. 
him, and he's like, you know. Dar- Darius is great. Isn't he, though? Yeah, just, just a super, super nice guy, he too. Is. Well, you know, we heard here, here we are today. You know, we've heard country music. Uh, we've heard some country music that touches a lot of memories. Uh, we heard Christmas music earlier today well, with the kids, you know. Yeah. So it's that, it's your voice. Everyone who sings has the opportunity to touch someone's heart and make them happy. Right. And that's a good thing. It's a blessing. Yeah, that's a good thing. Alex, thanks for being on the show. We look forward to seeing you again, my friend. We'll uh, we'll be on broadcast before you know it, and we'll uh, do some fun things in 2022. Sounds good to me. It's a good time to do good stuff, right? It's a good time to do good stuff. That's right. Well, this has been great. Thanks, folks, for joining us on this edition of Life in the Carolinas podcast with Alex Key. His sweet mama's here. Luke's behind us, and Tim's over there, making sure the sound works out just right. Uh, We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Life in the Carolinas podcast. If you enjoyed your time with us, please visit the show's website at lifeinthecarolinas.com. Join our mailing list and we'll keep you updated every week on what we have coming up and other interesting things around the Carolinas. We value you as a podcast subscriber. We'll see you next week. And remember what Carl says, it's never a bad time for a good story.